going to introduce you to the concept of expected utility preferences. When This is one form that someone's preferences could take over lotteries with assigning a positive probability or zero probability to any number of a set of finite options. Okay? We can also apply to an infinite set as well. All right? <clears throat> So it's only one possible type of preferences people could have over lotteries over these finite options. It's only one category, but it's the most commonly used in economics. But it's not uncontroversial. There are other frameworks in behavioral economics. So let me tell you what it is, and then we'll talk about what is the justification for it. So expected utility. Well, basically what that means, think of all the prizes Z in that set, big Z, that the lottery applies, that the lottery works over. Okay. She attaches the individual, we're going to think of a value the individual has for each of these prizes. Okay, for any possible outcome, she's going to have a value. Maybe you think about that as the utility, like the utility over certainties from before. We'll get to that. Okay, but there's some, if, if you have expected utility preferences, your decisions must be made by a utility function that's going to follow the, your decisions or your preferences, let's say, because decisions and preferences are not necessarily the same. Your preferences must agree with the utility function that I'm building up now. Okay? So for every element, for every element in the set of things that the lottery is operating over, we assign a value, Bernoulli utility, Bernoulli number, whatever. We're going to call that V of little z, sometimes called the Bernoulli utility. Here they call it the Bernoulli number. There's going to be some number that if that w there should be some way of applying this function to each element again if my preferences are expected utility preferences you could justify all my preferences ranking or perhaps if the choices are consistent with that justify all my choices by assigning a value to each element each to each element of the things that may occur with some probability right of all the prizes little prizes z and the big set of prizes big z um, and then it must be that my preferences are consistent with the following. Whenever I see a lottery that assigns a, a for any lottery among the set of prizes Z, remember lottery assigns a probability to each element in this set of possible things to choose from. Uh, it must be that my preferences will follow the, the following relationship, okay? Imagine some lottery with some set of prizes, uh, which uh, occur with probability P of Z for all of, sorry, for it's the same set of prizes for all possible possible elements in the, in this, uh, yeah, for all the possible elements uh, in this big set Z of things that can occur for all the prizes, we have one which assigns probability P of Z, and we have another one which assigns probability Q of Z. Two different lotteries, right? It's the same elements, although some of these could be zeros, but essentially it's the same elements, but different probabilities. Now imagine that I apply this function V of Z to all of the prizes in the set. And then I sum up for each prize that can occur with, you know, positive or whatever zero probability, because you'll just put a zero in front of it. For each such prize, I sum up the probability that prize occurs multiplied by this function, this let's say value function or Bernoulli function or Bernoulli number applied to that prize. 
All right, we're gonna call this, we're gonna call this the expected utility of the prize casually, okay? So for lottery P, here's the expected, here's the, the product of the same V of Z, of this V of Z term, the weighted sum of the V of Z term multiplied by all the probabilities within this lottery. And we're gonna compare it to this same, same, uh, to just different probabilities of the same outcomes according to this other lottery. So compare this to, again, same thing, all prob possible things in Z, but different probabilities of each. But we weight those all, each of those elements in a certain way. You know, how much do I value income 10,000? How much do I value income 50,000? How much do I value income 100,000? What's the probability of each of those for these two different lotteries? Okay. Now, uh, we're gonna, we call this lottery P. We call this lottery Q. If my preferences follow expected utility, it must be that there's some V function I can assign to all, each of the prizes. You know, well, you may have seen diminishing returns to income type function utility of income functions. There's some function I could apply to each of the prizes such that whenever I prefer lottery P to lottery Q, right, lottery P has P of Z, lottery Q has Q of Z for each prize Z. Whenever I prefer lottery P to lottery Q, it must be that lottery P, actually, whenever I'm weakly prefer, we'd state things in terms of weak preference, it must be that this uh, weighted sum is greater for lottery P than for lottery Q. Sim colloquially speaking, you might say the expected utility is greater here than here. Now, if these are numbers, it doesn't mean that the expected prize value, if, this, if these were monetary prizes, it doesn't mean the expected prize value has to be greater. Because remember, this function V of Z operates over each possible prize. It can have any curvature. We'll get to that in a moment, okay? So we see the definition of expected utility of, of someone's preferences following the expected utility form. For any set Z of prizes, a preference relation over on the set L of Z, right? Preference relation over any possible lotteries over this set of possible prizes, let's say, 10,000, 50,000, and 100,000, for example. My preference is over any lottery, among any lotteries among those, like for instance, one could be a uh, 100% chance of 10,000, one could be a uh, 50% chance of 10,000 and 50,000, and one could be, uh, sorry, I, I get it. one could be, I forgot about zero, you always have to count if there's zero, but okay, one could be a 90% chance of 10,000 and a 10% chance of 100,000. My preferences over those, let's say three, or in fact, any set of lotteries among the three options, the three things in the choice set here. In this case, I said 10, 50, and 100. My preferences over any probabilities adding up to one among these three outcomes. Uh, if those are consistent with expected utility, my, if my preference relation, that's not a greater than or equal to sign, that's a weak preferred sign, my preference relation is consistent with expected utility. My preference over these lotteries, so in this case over L, if this here this is Z, L of Z, any combination of probabilities of these here are three prizes. Uh, if there's a function, there has to be some function V that basically can be V of any of the little Z. So as with, with this V function, we say it maps from, the V function maps from each possible element of set Z. So here, 10, 50, and 100. It maps from each element of set Z, each possible prize, to some real number. We call that Bernoulli number or, or whatever. But I've also heard it called von Neumann Morgenstern. Uh, for my preferences over any probability, any lotteries involving, let's say, these three combinations, 
for those preferences to be consistent with expected utility must be that there's some function I can ascribe to this, let's say 10, 50, and 100, such that whenever the weighted sum of the probability and the function applied to the each element is greater than I, in one lottery than another, then I prefer that lottery, okay? So there has to be a function that maps from, from each element to a real number such that the, pre the preference relation we're talking about is, remember, we defined a preference relation being represented by a utility function. If the, preference rep if the preference relation is represented by the utility function defined as, or I'll put some room here, in general, utility of lottery P, right, assigning a, a, a probability of each prize to, to assign a probability to each prize, defined as, again, sum for each element in the set, probability of that prize times this function, V of Z. Uh, if there's such a utility function, if this util, if there's, if I can come up with some V function, some, we could call it utility of each outcome, if you like, Bernoulli utility, such that preferences can be represented in this way, then, uh, then we say that the preference relation, uh, th this preference relation, this preferences over lotteries, let's say over combinations of probabilistic combinations of 10, 50, and 100, these preferences are consistent with expected utility. That's it. That's the definition of preferences consistent with expected utility. Preferences consistent with expected utility can be expressed as assign a value to each possible outcome. Uh, you know, some there has to be some value we can assign to each possible outcome such that my preferences over the latter is always expressed based on the weighted sum of that value applied to the outcome times the probability that that outcome occurs. Okay, and it turns out, okay, so should, is that a reasonable thing to think? Should people's preferences always be weighted sums of utility? Well, it does, you know, you might say people are risk averse. Well, this allows for risk aversion because I can have diminishing returns to greater outcomes. But it's, there's some things it won't allow for, and we see that in the Allais paradox. It's going to, there's certain choice reversal. I believe I, I, I talked to you about it. If not, I will. There's a certain choice reversal. I think I made a video about it that people seem to make, at least when they're presented with these, with these choices in hypothetical and small settings, that could not be explained by these type of preferences. So why do we think we might have these type of preferences? Well, there's simply two axioms, both of which seem totally reasonable when I'm going to explain them to you. Continuity and independence, I believe that's what they're called, that will imply that your choices, that your preferences, if, if your preferences are continuous in this sense and your preferences are independent in this sense, then your preferences are consistent with expected utility and also vice versa. So we'll get to that in a moment.